Welcome to the Basecamp Barn Project. In this episode, our trusses show up. But before we can get a roof overhead, we gotta do a few things. Yep, it's time to get back to work. Trusses are here. We got all of our roof trusses. Yes. They look wonderful. I wish you could smell this. <laughs> Smells like fresh pine. I don't know if it, how fresh it is, but it does smell like you're in the trees in the mountains and in northwestern area of Washington State. It smells like, you know, cedar or pine. It smells good. And we also got all of our wood for the interior framing. Plenty of wood. All this stuff here is going to be for the the top headers. We got a few other pieces. I'm not sure exactly what they're for yet. We got some big LVLs for all of our openings on the load bearing wall. I think I have enough lumber for the load bearing wall. Ah, we'll see what happens when we get there. I just need this ice to melt so I can put some walls up on it. Maybe if the dog licks it a little bit more. I'll probably take some more of the outside stuff off, the bracing, because I need that lumber. I gotta leave the tarps on for another day or two, just to help this concrete to cure. If I were to start someplace, I'd probably start up here, putting in some, um, you know, the top plates, getting a, a baseline height to work with, I got to pull some strings, snap some lines, kind of get ready to start building some walls. Uh, that's kind of the goal here, now that I got all the wood. It's just cool, we got the uh, roof trusses. We've been talking to that company now for 11 months, 10 months. This is the eighth iteration of design. We went through three or four right off the bat, just kind of coming up with different ideas, maximizing their their plate, making sure it could be shipped here so it wasn't so big we'd have to do something special or make it into multiple pieces. So right now 
that's exactly the biggest pieces that they could make on the uh, on their on their plate and for the most part that's the biggest thing that we could ship legally over the road so yeah here we go Let's see if we can get a roof on this thing I think we can safely say we are done with the poor. All the support members are off of the building. A ton of lumber, and I can't count how many screws we've used. <laughs> A bunch. But all the lumber's off, that means we are on to framing. We're up here on top of the scaffold. This wall is over 16 feet high, so we're quite a ways <laughs> off of the ground. Seems like we're either way up in the, in the sky here or down in the trenches. <laughs> we're gonna try to get these top plates in. I've got this wall done, it, just so that we can get some wall measurements to firm in where we're gonna build our load support or our load bearing wall. Um, I've got numbers from down on the ground but we need to know what they are up here in the air. So I've already done a measurement from this corner here. That piece there is right up against the edge of the blocks so that's as far that way as the trusses are going to be able to go. And I've measured all the way down to where I think the wall is going to be built. The load support wall or the load bearing wall. I put a board down there. That'll be basically the top plate of the wall. And I've got it lightly bolted in. I'm not bolting anything hard to these bolts yet because the concrete isn't really done curing. But I've taken a measurement from See, that's the west wall all the way down, and we're three eighths of an inch too short. So I need to push that board that way longer, make this length a little bit longer, so that the trusses fit right on top of that block perfectly. This is the basis over here because I can't move that. <laughs> that concrete isn't going to move. I'll drop a laser or a plumb bob line down to the floor and get a mark and, and mark the floor where that board is supposed to be to hold up these trusses. And then today I'm going to work my way down this wall with these top plates and get down to that far end and figure out, take a measurement over to that corner and get the uh, distance that needs and we'll drop a plumb blob laser to the floor and get that marked 
and then we'll be able to strike a, a snap a line, you know, snap a chalk line and be able to know where that wall is going to go. So that's the project for right now is I got to carry on down this here wall with these top plates and get to the other end and uh, we'll see what that end looks like. One of the problems of building in the winter is all of my lumber is frozen. And my fancy drill bit doesn't seem to want to go through because it just the frozen wood is just chewed on. So you got to hit it with another drill to get through and then you come through the other side. So it's just a little more time. I'm rolling out this foam uh, membrane it's a gasket material they call it but it's just foam underneath our ledger plates I'm just putting them in I'm not bolting them down because I just don't think the concrete is dry enough to really tug on these bolts just yet it probably needs another three or four days moving to the next spot The west wall is done. You side all the way down. I do have a, a nut and a bolt lightly pinched here just to hold this because we're going to pull a measurement now and see how close we are. We just snapped some lines. You probably won't be able to see it, but we lasered from the top. That's the dot and it measures three eighths of an inch short so I've made a line three eighths of an inch further away and believe it or not the other wall is three eighths of an inch short also so this wall here is is a good reference so we just snapped a line between those two adjustments that I made three-eighths of an inch here and three-eighths of an inch down there I doubt you can see it I've made little sharpie marks at each crack intersection so now we have a location for our load bearing wall so there's your day's work right at sunset <laughs> Well, this morning we've successfully gotten some positive numbers here. I'm roughly a quarter inch too narrow 
on this this wall, but I have a little bit of room over there to, to make the trusses go a quarter inch that way. So it's all good. This side is perfect within an eighth of an inch. That's really good. So I'm gonna start building this wall here. Sun's out, it's beautiful. It's gonna be about 40 degrees today. A little warmer in here. If the wind dies down, I could probably take my coat off. <laughs> but there's a little bit of a breeze. So it's blowing stuff kind of everywhere, but need a nice flat, clean surface to work on. So here we go. I'm gonna start framing this big opening and then we'll get uh, Doug's lift. I'll probably bring it over here tomorrow to lift up the darn thing. It's gonna be heavy as heck. Well, here we are. I got my first major piece dry fit and all the dimensions are pretty good. There's the puppy. <laughs> so we got three LVLs in here. And then I'm, in order to get my proper height, I got a two by four on its side. So we're gonna stack three of them. The dog here in the way. I'm gonna stack three of them in there. I've got two kings. <laughs> Not the Two kings and I got five studs holding up the LVL. Got one bottom because the LVL is a quarter short for sheetrock if we ever put siding up. So it's got a bottom and a top piece. And then this will be the top plate. And it's exactly where we want it to be. That's the first piece. I'll have to square it up and do all that stuff. And I gotta take it all kind of apart to get start getting nails and screws in. I'll put a bottom plate on this. Uh, I might extend it another stud or two. And then I'll put a, a cross tie or two in here to crisscross this thing so that when we stand it up, it doesn't go goofy on us. There's a bunch of cuts, a bunch of lumber right there. That's That ate up a bunch of pieces. <laughs> But I got a bunch more, so we're working on framing. First thing we got to do is laminate these LVLs with these screws. These are specially made for LVL lamination. Lamination really just means you're screwing two or three or four panels together. So we've got three LVLs here. 14 inches wide and we're 14 inch or the opening is 14 feet wide so these are all been engineered for the span to support the roof load on top I just snapped a couple lines it looks like these marks here are every six inches we need to put three rows of these screws every 12 so I'm probably going to alternate I'm gonna put a screw here and then a screw here but then in the middle screw I'll alternate we can screw them in from one side we don't have to screw them in from both sides and this is a five and a, a five inch screw and these laminations are inch and three quarter a piece so they're five and a quarter tall so that's the perfect screw for it. They've got a really nice flat head with serrations on the back. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but this is a really cool screw to attach all these with. But that's the chore right now is to screw them all together. We'll see, I'm guessing about three batteries to do roughly 50 of these screws. <laughs> So we'll see how the battery situation lasts.
That's a big long screw there. Well, there you go. 49 screws. I got one left over. I got one very warm impact gun and two dead batteries. <laughs> so the large battery did the bulk of the work. It did a good job. There's just a couple that are sticking up a little bit. So I'm going to have to get a bigger impact and see if I can push them in. But I don't think it matters too much because sheetrock is going to go over the top of it anyway. But there you go. Laminated a stack of three LVLs. Moving on, let's put this thing together. Well, there's the, the first main opening done. Got my kings on, I got my supports on, got the bottom board on. I did nails there, but I screwed all of these pieces together just to give them some support and some strength. And I'm going to start on the top piece here, and then uh, we'll get the bottom done and we'll be ready to tip up. Sun's come out, <laughs> but the wind's picked up. are making noise. Water bottles. Gotta secure the cameras. Well, there you go. First wall up. It's the big door. 14 plus feet tall, 14 feet wide. It's very level, very square. I got the top bolted in. 
I got the bottom bolted in. But look at this wood. Lots of wood here. That was just my lifting piece so I didn't damage the top plate. Or the bottom plate, I guess. And then a couple supports here. I've locked in my scaffold, but we've also put lumber in the way to get it out of the way to do this. <laughs> but now that this is up, I can move the lumber back and we'll be able to get the scaffold back out of the way. And it's supposed to snow tonight. Feet! <laughs> Probably not. But we're covering stuff up anyway. But yeah, that's an accomplishment right there. That's a big piece of weight. It was easy to pick with the, the lift, but when I was fully extended, I could feel the rear tires getting light. And it was windy, but now the wind has gone away. Not that the wind is going to blow this too far. There's nothing to blow on. We'll see what we can do tomorrow.